Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome once again to downtown Washington DC. We are finally back out in the field after quite a hiatus. And what you see behind me, this huge, magnificent building, is the J. Edgar Hoover FBI headquarters here in Washington DC. Now the building, which is, as you can see, is enormous compared to many of the other buildings, is right here on Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're, I'm going to say roughly, halfway between the White House and the United States Capitol building. So, I mean, the epicenter of Washington, D.C. is, in fact, the FBI headquarters. Not to be confused with the FBI Washington field office. This is actually the headquarters, the epicenter. This is where the director works. This is the center of the organization, part of the Department of Justice. Now the building is named in honor of the first director of the FBI, John Edgar Hoover. Although he never went by John, he always went by J. Edgar. Now, J. Edgar Hoover was a very controversial individual. We'll get that in a little bit. But despite that, uh, they felt, they meaning the government, all the, the powers that be, felt that he had contributed so much to the advancement of the Federal Bureau of Investigation that when they built this uh, beautiful headquarters, they named it in his honor. Now Hoover was the first director of the FBI, but he came to that position because he was the fifth and current director of the Bureau of Investigation, is what it was called at the time. When it was changed to Federal Bureau of Investigation in 1924, then he was appointed as the first director of the FBI. So that's how he came into that position. Again, very controversial uh, individual, wielded a lot of power. There are so many rumors, so many books written about him that he had secret files with information that he could use to keep people in check, even presidents, you know, they were afraid of being blackmailed. I, I don't know the extent of the truth of that. Um, I do know he had a lot of people under surveillance. Um, if you look at the Wikipedia entry, um, you will see that he, there's actually a document there where he had G, uh, John Lennon, uh, one of the members of the group, the Beatles, uh, under surveillance. So, yeah, he, he wielded a lot of power, um, but we'll never know to what extent the rumors of his secret files are true or not. Anyway, Hoover was actually born here in Washington, D.C., lived his entire life here in this, in this relatively small city and died here. Now, I'm going to go over to the Congressional Cemetery once again, and we're going to visit his grave and talk a little bit about some of the rumors that well, may or may not be true. But I wanted to bring you here downtown first to show you this great big headquarters building named in his honor. Kind of a dreary day, but it's still pretty nice for being November. They're having a race here today, so many of the streets are blocked off, so we don't have any traffic noise. We got kind of lucky. Anyway, let's go on over to the cemetery, and we'll talk a little bit more about the personal life of J. Edgar Hoover and his relationship with Clyde Tolson. So the interesting thing about famous people is when they're alive there's no way to get near them. You know they're surrounded by their entourage or locked behind closed doors. But once they're dead you can get right up to, to be with them. And here in Congressional Cemetery is the family grave site of J. Edgar Hoover. Now, Hoover never married in his lifetime. He was a single man his entire life. And there were, during almost his entire lifetime, rumors or speculation about his sexuality. Everything from the fact that he was a homosexual to being an asexual, meaning essentially that he had no uh, sex drive, no interest in sexuality at all, which is rare, but it's not unheard of. 
um, he had other things that were more important to him. He just didn't have the drive. Uh, we may never know which is true, and in this day and age, we, we really don't care. It was a big deal during his lifetime. Uh, homosexuality during Hoover's lifetime definitely was largely frowned upon by society. Uh, anyway, he had a very close personal friend since he was a very young man by the name of Clyde Tolson. And they spent all their time together. Tolson ultimately became an associate director under Hoover uh, at the FBI and spent his career there. And when Hoover died, became the acting director of the FBI. Now, you see Hoover's family grave site, of course, has the seal of the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Um, this fence was actually built, or designed, built, and donated by a former special agent. There's a little placard on that, down at the other end, in 1996. And there's a bench here that we'd like to swing around, if we can, that also has a symbol on it, a seal. And this is the seal of the Society of Former Special Agents, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So I'm sure that the Society paid for and donated this bench so people who wanted to come and spend some time reflecting on the former first director of the FBI could do so. And health all steel, very, it's gonna be here for a long, long time. Obviously the gray site's very well kept and maintained, some privet hedge, some uh, flowers, all very nicely done. Now, when Hoover died, he actually left his estate, his home, his entire estate, to his friend, Clyde Tolson. And Tolson, as it turns out, is buried just a few yards down Hazel. the row here Hazel, in Congressional come. Cemetery. So let's go down there and I'll show you that. So about, I don't know, 35 yards or so down the avenue from Hoover's family gravesite is this small unassuming headstone for Clyde Tolson. This was the lifelong friend of J. Edgar Hoover, who inherited his estate, moved into his house after Hoover passed away and welded to him, and lived there until he died in 1975. So these, these fellows, although they were born, well, in fact, Tolson was born in 1900, and uh, Hoover, I think, was born in 1895, lived well into my lifetime. I would have been in high school at the time that Tolson passed away. So anyway, this is Hoover's friend, maybe Hoover's lover. I don't know. I genuinely don't care. I'm a little more concerned about some of the surreptitious things that Hoover did in his lifetime uh, with surveillance of people. That, that I have a problem with. But his, uh, his personal affairs, no, not, not really, I, I don't really care. I, it doesn't matter with, to me. But this is, I wanted to bring it down here and show you. It's a, a very lovely setting. And, uh, I don't know, I guess fitting. These people were, he was the second director of the FBI, and yet this very small and unassuming place in the, in the world and in history. Uh, but a very powerful position and a very important time in the development of a very, very big agency here in the United States. So I guess I was a little surprised when I got here that this was a simple headstone, just no big obelisk or no huge carved elaborate thing marking the grave of Hoover. Because certainly, you know, I remember when Hoover was alive and certainly a larger than life character in his own lifetime. So I would have expected something significantly more grandiose, but in fact, it's a very simple gravestone. And uh, the, as I said, the fence even was something that was added 
in in 96 so years after after Hoover died other than that it was just a simple grave plot I don't know he just it was surprising but anyway it's a lovely setting I, I do uh, I mean if you can really uh, like a cemetery and, and they had their own appeal this is a lovely one and uh, it's fitting since he was born here and spent his entire life in Washington, D.C., that his final resting place would be in the Congressional Cemetery. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this um, visit with J. Edgar Hoover um, here in Washington, D.C. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, I will try and answer them. I'm not an expert on the subject, but I will try. I certainly enjoy hearing from everyone. Even if you want to just stop in and say hi, please leave your comments down in the comment section below. I love hearing from all of you. Hey, if you're new here, well, I'm back out in the field doing the best I can. And welcome. Uh, please consider picking subscribe and joining us, coming along for the adventure. And as always, thank you for watching.